This is Mike Williams. I'm here at the Agriplex here in Coleman. We're going to talk about hydroponics today. We had a uh, lunch and learn set up for today, but due to COVID-19, we're having to go online with it. So this is the system here that we maintain at the Agriplex. And we're just going to go down the, go down the rail system here. I call it a rail system. And then we'll come back and we'll start busting out individual parts. But the reason that I think hydroponics is such an effective way of gardening is everything is for me. It, it, I don't have to bend over a lot. You're growing in a nutrient solution, so therefore you don't have to deal with the soil. Without the soil, you're, you're taking away about 50% of your pest problems because the, the pest problems are in the soil with their eggs and their larvae growing in the soil. So by going to this, you can't eliminate pests, but you'd be surprised. It's, it's amazing. I, I don't have any trouble with pests, really. You still get everything else. You get your powdery mildew, you get your blossom in rot, you get your things that, just like if you're a gardener, you learn from the other part of gardening, you bring it to this. You get, still got to know your plants. It doesn't t take the place of that, but it's, uh, it, they'll, they'll grow faster, uh, and you can actually put them denser. I've got these a little bit too close here on the rails, but uh, by having all the nutrients that they can take at one time when they that's something to what the root system is. Okay, that's not a great root system, but that's that's quite a bit. But if this was in the ground, these roots have to really, they have to create suction or pressure to get the moisture out of the dirt and the soil because they don't feed on the soil, they, they feed on the water. And the water, the, the minerals, the potassium, nitrogen, phosphorus that the plants need is leached into the roots. So by giving them just putting them right in the, in the nutrient solution itself, man, they just suck it right up. So they, they grow a lot faster. You can control that you know your plants are getting nutrients that they need. Uh, people that, if, you, if you're trying to farm out in the soil, you're doing soil tests, you're trying to put down lime or whatever based upon what the soil test shows. And to me, there's just no way in the world you're really ever gonna get that mixed in and you know the water the, the rain, whether you got a lot of rain or don't have a lot of rain, there's just a lot of problems to me of doing it the traditional way. I love doing it this way. You don't have to have, these are four inch sewer pipe. You don't use PVC schedule 40. You don't, you don't use, P, you know, this is, everybody, I've had people tell me all kinds of stuff they've used. They've used electrical conduit, uh, they use schedule 40, but they all come back and say, nope, that was wrong for different reasons. Schedule 40 is just too doggone thick. You can't even drill through it. So this four inch sewer pipe is perfect. And you start with your basic pipe, your holes. If, you don't, if you're gonna grow lettuce, you can put your holes six inches apart. You're gonna grow beans or stuff, you need to be 12 or 18 inches apart. Uh, if you really, if you want what I call a multiple pipe for general purposes, just drill all your holes to start with 12 inches apart. And then if you decide you're gonna make that a lettuce rail later, you just come back and you just drill another hole in between those 12s. And so now you've got them six inches apart for your lettuce. And then you can use skip one and then you'll have your good 24 inches if you want to for your beans or your other big flowery type stuff. So this particular one here, you can't really see it, but I, I use pallets. I just use pallets. I mean, these, these cheap wood pallets was free. So I just got pallets and I leaned them up against these rails, these, these fence posts right here. Drove them in the ground, leaned the pallets up. You use your J-hooks. These J-hooks attach in the back back here. And you just level it up. Every system I've ever built until this one, it was only 10 foot. I did not put them together. This was my first time to do this and I made a lot of mistakes. I've learned a lot of a better way of doing it. But these pipes, here's my joint right here. This is your joint where they come in together. See, it's beveled right here on this end. I've always cut this off right here, put a cap on it, and just use, you know, separate. But somebody give me an idea of putting them together and just having a good long run. It would work great, but it's not going to work great with pallets. You're going to have to drive your 4 by 4 post and use 2 bys to make it really level and uh, make it towards, I've got, I bought a laser level at night out here and tried to level this stuff up and it was a real mess. <laughs> I use this cheap screen stuff right here. This is from Lowe's, about six bucks a sheet, but this is good for them to climb on. Uh, if you'll, if you'll, I try to keep, I'll try to keep like my beans down there, my cucumbers here, 
my lettuce up here, my peppers up there. That was the way I had designed to set it up. But uh, I guess that's about all the benefits. It's just, uh, you know, it's obvious to me you can, you can control your nutrients. You know, make sure your plants are getting nutrients. And I, I grow head uh, leaf lettuce. I don't grow head lettuce. You need a cracky system where you're floating to do good head lettuce. You're not going to grow good head lettuce on a rail system. But you can see from this, this one here, we've picked it off. You can pick it off and it'll just keep climbing. It'll just keep growing. So you don't have to plant seeds again and germinate, et cetera, on that. Uh, the reservoir, you, this is the pipe on the back side. You can see it runs down the system. That's the, that's the nutrient coming out of the reservoir down here. I've got a 55 gallon drum. I needed it buried in the ground because these need the gravity flow back into the tank. So when you, just, you just hook your pipes up, open up your valve, and the gravity flow will flow right back into the tank and you can circulate your, get you circulating up your water that way and circulate your nutrients. Now once a week I'll drain off about 20 gallons and I designed this one for this bottom pipe but I'm not even using the bottom pipe on this one so this one here I'll just drain this one off and then it means I've got to have a, another a 10, 10 foot the 4 inch pipe comes in 10 foot sections and it's 5 gallons of water so you got 5 down through here so that's 25 gallons of water and it's of course not all the way up so you're, you're talking about 18 or 19 but I'm just saying is I'll drain one of these pipes, this one here, I'll just drain it off. I'll drain these other two back into the reservoir tank, mix it all up good, and then just turn my valve, have my water come down through here, go out there, and the other end is individual pipes to uh, load them in. I use this General Hydroponics. It's a three-part system. You got bloom, grow, and micro. But this, this General Hydroponics, this is what they use on the space station. This is what NASA uses. <laughs> it's one of the, it's the best-selling nutrients there is. And it's real easy on the back to learn. Uh, it's very easy to learn how much per gallon to put in. It's real easy to use. So um, we can pause and go back to the truck. I gotta follow you. Are you just gonna follow me? All right. Well, I <laughs> think that's. I'm just looking here. We will. We'll show you these in the individual. Uh, but, but this is the black cup is a net cup and what's inside here holding it is what's what's called hydrogen it's just clay it just helps support like a pepper pepper's going to need support and okra is a lot bigger okra don't even i mean you need to support it when it's little but then okra just goes up and supports itself so a lot of stuff you learn twist that and give it a circular motion to get those roots back down in there you're uh so i don't have any hydrogen in the lettuce the lettuce, it, it, it doesn't, there's no use in putting it in there. You don't need it. But in your beans, in your peppers, cucumbers, I use the hydrogen. And we can look at all of this individually. See, this is, this is where I've got the, 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 the water's coming in. I can hit that and drain it off into the creek if I need to just drain some more. But then I just open these up and I fill the pipe up right here. So... You can use this running 24-7. I've done that about three years ago. I ran a system just 24-7. But you run across too many problems. Uh, I mean, just plant, plant a grow a leaf in there, and that'll just start flying out. And then your pump's running all night, and you come back, and you're, you got to have a system in there to protect your pump. So you don't have to run it 24-7. Uh, it, if you do, that's fine. But uh, if you just let it sit... It's called a cracking method if you just let it sit. Professor, the professor in Hawaii figured out and come up with uh, the fact that you can just take a lettuce and put it in a 18 gallon rubber tote from Walmart and it'll, it will support five heads of lettuce in like a mason jar. You can just put a head of lettuce in there and it'll grow a thing of leaf lettuce. You don't have to, he, he calls it set it and forget it. You don't have to do nothing else to it, period. Uh, you just mix your nutrients and let it grow. But see this pipe here with this much growth on it they'll just about suck this pipe dry in two days so you, you it is you know i'm I, I check it daily and if you don't you gonna wind up with some with some dead plants because your your nutrients are going to be gone so but that way like i said what do you do out here in the, in the soil you just put a sprinkler on it and you waste a lot of water water and everything 
Now, the, the individual parts for this right here, this was your net cup. And so they make, that's a three inch net cup, that's an inch and a half net cup. Uh, if you're just gonna do nothing but lettuce, you do that, but see, that's a different size hole. So once you cut your pipe for this hole, you've dedicated that pipe to nothing but lettuce, okay? Normally, you just use a three inch because the lettuce grows great in there, but I'm just saying is some people do, you, there's just all kind of varieties of what you can do. We start with an end cap, we drill a hole in it, and this is what we come up with the finished product, which is on the end of all, all the stuff that fits there. And I have lately started doing this, putting them up like this to where it just fills up and then overflow comes out. But if you, if you come down here low, like this, this side right here, see, I've got, I've got it here to where I put a drain on it. You can have it just come out, but it, it's just a few more cents to build this. You don't want to put one of these, 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 these cutoffs right here. You don't, you don't need one of these cutoffs on, on the end of the pipe because there's too much pressure. It'll bend it. it. It'll leak on you. But see, this right here is perfect. You just turn it straight up. You want to drain it, just turn it down. So for <laughs> 15, 20 cents, you come out with the, with the, with the best, best way to do it. And that's what I've done over the years. I found some of the cheapest ways to do it. And uh, for example, this is this is a four inch J hook. I mean, these are like a dollar eighteen cents at Lowe's, and that just supports the pipe. And the pipe will come in and out of it. So you can, I can sit there and take any one of them pipe and pick it up, and move it. Now I can on these because they're they're linked. But like I said, at home and all my other bills, they're just ten foot pipe. Like this pipe right here is a, is a ten foot pipe. And if that's sitting on my rail. I can just pick that pipe up, move it, take it down, clean it out, whatever, anything I need to do. But that's why the J-hooks, to me, they're, yes, in a system, you, uh, one, two, three, you may have 20 bucks of J-hooks in, in, a, in a, a five rail build, but it was suggested to use this tape right here. This is, this tape, this tape right here is, it ain't a dollar for, for, for doing the whole thing, but, and you just wrap it around, screw it, but it's almost impossible to get it level. So your J-hooks, you take, the, if you're doing a, a bill, say five pipes or four, you just level that top one, and that's it. After that, you just take your J-hook, and you come right down your post, you put that right there, and if, if this is level, and that's touching that one, then this one's going to be level. So leveling the rest of it is, is real simple. It's, 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 it's no problem. So I wrote this in there to remind me to tell you that once you, when you drill in this pipe, you do drill in reverse. You have to use your, your uh, drill to get this tip started. So once that tip, that tip sticking up about a quarter inch, you use it going right until it touches these teeth. Once it touches these teeth, you put your drill in reverse and then you drill your hole out. And it is a two and three quarter is, is the best if you want to use a three inch net cup. The, uh, the, this three inch here, so I, at the very first, I've, I've got lots of pipe. And see, it, it's just bouncy. It's going to lean this way or lean this way. Uh, it's great for just growing lettuce, but for peppers or other heavy duty stuff, the three inch hole is not, not good enough. But see, a two and three quarter inch hole, it fits down in there tight. And it's it's just it's just the best to use a two or three quarter. But I've got like I said I've got about 20 pipe I'm having to deal with just because I can't just throw them away. And so you let me find my here we go. Your seedings are going into your rock wool. So you got different size rock wools you can use. Like I said you can you you can use, any any of it is great for lettuce, but lettuce does good in these. They're cheaper. So I'm just there again, just talking about trying to save a little bit of money by making that a cheaper. But it comes in big blo big blocks. It's called rock wool, and it is rock wool, just like what your in insulation in your house is rock wool. But it's it's lava rock. It's volcanic lava rock, and they just shave it like like you shave ice up there. And so you buy them in blocks. You wet them, let them soak for at least 30 seconds. Then you bring them out. You bust them up. You lay your cups out every how many you're gonna do and I put them in I put them in the trays I didn't I didn't bring a tray 
but I put them in the trays like, like everybody sees. You see them, they sell them everywhere. They're just little black trays, about that high, and 18 of them will fit. And you can actually squeeze two more in the end. So you can put 20 cups in one of those trays. And once they're wet, then you just drop it in there. And you have to take a pin and make it a little bit bigger hole on a lot of them. You drop your seeds down in that hole. And then I just pinch it over just to kind of give it the feeling it's nighttime. It's not, you know, broad daylight. And just keep that moist. After two days, lettuce is going to come up in three to five. But it's got to be cool. you got to put your lettuce somewhere cool. It's not going to come up out here in this heat. It's, it'll, it'll, it'll germinate if you'll keep it cool. So once it's germinating and come up, then you're going to have to put it out in the sun or you're going to have to put it under your grow lights because your lettuce will get leggy, they call it. All your plants, the seed will get leggy if you don't give it sun immediately because they'll start reaching for the light. And that's what causes legginess. So you start with your rock wool wet, put your seed in there. You know, if you want to put two in there in case it doesn't germinate, whatever. I mean, lettuce is going to germinate in three to five days. If it hadn't germinated in five days, then I'll just drop another seed in there. I mean, you can't use it again after it's been on the rail and grown something, but you can use it plenty until you start something in it. And then once it starts to grow, it's going what it is, but if, like, if it's lettuce, I don't fool with it. If it's other stuff, then I put rock wool here. And all, all this, I mean, around the rock wool is the hydrogen. And the only basis of hydrogen is just to support that rock wool. Because like I said, peppers and cucumbers, they'll be a little bit bigger. I bought a sample here. This is an okra plant I had left over from last year. And you just would not believe the, uh, wow. the roots put out by this okra plant. I mean, they'll, they'll go three foot on both sides. And that plant will stand straight up. It, wow. it, it won't lean. I mean, uh, but that's, I just, I kept that just because, like I said, that's what, about what all your okra looks like. Uh, it puts out a real heavy duty uh, root system. So, you get your pipe, you get your holes drilled, and then uh, we covered the end cap. Well, we, I started with the end cap right there, but you got to drill your hole in the end cap. And then I use this rubber grommet, I call it. Those things there, they're about 21 cents. The only place I can find them is W.W. Granger. You got to buy them by, by, by a lot of 50, but you can see it's got the rim on it right there. And that fits right inside there on both sides and then if you can see the I bevel the end of that pipe the uh, the pipe has, has beveled and I take just a little bit of you can use Vaseline or anything it's just a little bit slick to help you get it started and I've started plenty with an end like this but you know nothing done to it but it is so much easier to take this right here and just put it on a sanding belt and just turn it a few times and it just and then put a little lube on it it'll go right in and now you got it, then you just, you do, you do glue it down, okay? Now, on this end, this is something, this pipe there, you notice you got a black, black rubber end on it. See, I just found these. I didn't, I didn't know anything about these for two years. And this is, this is great. That's, it was a, it was a godsend to me. <laughs> so you just unscrew that, take that off, you take your hose on that end and you can flush it and you can drain it. You just want to drain a little bit, just loosen it up, and it'll drain. But before, you was having to put a cap on here. And so the only way you could fill it up with water and you just had to hold it up and just let it, let it just, you know, gravity flow out. It was hard to get it clean, hard to get the pipe clean. So, now these, in these net cups, besides using rock wool, you can, if you don't want to use the hydrogen to support, they make these neoprene, Right there, you just put your plant head right there and just let it grow in that. And I don't like, do, I don't like doing that because they're a dollar a piece. I just, I mean, if you got, there's 265 holes on this rail, so that's $265 just in these things. And that's just way too much. It, 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 it would be something if you were just trying to really be specific and grow a specific uh, product that fit good in that, okay? So, but now you can use... This is a this is a pool noodle. You <laughs> recognize it, and they sell them at Walmart and dollar. I mean, sometimes they're two or three dollars, but you you catch them on sale for a dollar a piece, and you just cut your little niche out of there. Now, this is not the right size for a three inch, but you see how that fits right there in that right there, and now you that supports your plant, and you're doing it for probably a nickel a nickel a piece instead of you know a dollar a piece, 
and hydroton is not cheap but it's reusable and at the end of the year when you take all your plants out you just take them out you throw that away you put your hydroton i put it i put it in a big thing and i wash it uh, just for any uh, larvae or anything else that might be on it to hurt my plants for the next year so they make you want to go the route of growing uh -huh. stuff in buckets this is just a five gallon bucket it's perfect on a five gallon bucket now you can put hydroton in there and know what you put you put your rock wool down in there put hydroton ton in there and just put nutrients well that was a crash there. Oops. you put your nutrients in, in your five gallon bucket and you put that on it and it's no problem uh it's not gonna there's not gonna be enough nutrients in five gallons to grow a big old tomato plant out of this but it's simple you just keep pouring nutrients through that and you can see where your nutrient level is right here coming up through here or you can just kind of raise it up a little bit and see but if you don't want to do the do a, do a little rock wool and do the hydrogen then they make a big old rock wool that box see that bit that goes down in there so you plant your seed there this is great for tomatoes and then it's it's strong enough to support but this would this would be something for bigger squash zucchini uh, but now you could put cucumbers in there i mean you can go in there you want to but this rock one rock wheel right here that's about four bucks that's about six so that's ten bucks just for that plant you get to where you can just stuff's expensive at the store but you can almost buy it at the store so, uh, to me another advantage though of hydroponics is the investment in the pipe and, and this stuff it's only a one-time deal after that it's good next year just clean it up and plant it again or if you're going to plant kale or something through the winter you, you can use it all winter long but uh so you will have to re if you're going to do this you'd have to replace this every year if you're going to do this but that's why i say i like using the hydrogen because it, it's just it's just a lot easier to fool with and deal with and you're going to be able to use it over and over and over so but that's just some choices that you have uh, and like I said, there, there are plenty of choices. Now, I'm sitting here looking. How long have we been going, Rachel? 22 minutes. Oh, well, it's about lunchtime, isn't it? <laughs> I've got something here. I don't know about, about us spreading products or, or spreading, but if you have a rail system, you're going to have mosquitoes, and you don't run it constantly, you're going to have mosquito larvae show up in that, and you're gonna, you'll have a, a mosquito base there. But real simple, these mosquito dumps right here, and they make different different material, but you have to have this. I don't know if you can actually get on that or not, Rachel. But you, that's what you yeah. gotta have. It's got to be Israelis. Oh, if, for the Bacillus thuringiensis, yes. and then it's gotta be right. Okay. If, if it's not that, it's not gonna. It's not. They they sell see. stuff that it's not gonna work. Okay. But this stuff here, you just I just I just take it. I put it in a a jar about that size, peanut planter's peanut jar and I just take my hammer here and I just beat them up then I just go around and I just put a couple of pinches in every hole and you'll see the, you'll see the larvae in there and you come back a day after you put that in there the larvae quit swimming so you'll you'll need to take care of that now the only other only two things I do use if I have to use anything is neem oil and this is good for your powdery mildew and some other funguses we've had so much rain and stuff here lately that I've, I've had to use more of this this year than I ever have. In fact, this year, because I knew the conditions, the it's just muggy and it's raining and then the sun comes out and then it rains again for 20 minutes. And so I was just spraying this every seven days, about three weeks, just to stay ahead of it. And I've got no problem of any kind at the house. Otherwise, I usually don't spray it until I see it, I need it. But there is a thing about uh, a lot of people do. I mean, this is organic and it really, I mean, it's just, it's neem oil extract. It's just, it's seeds from the neem oil tree the neem tree and they just compress them so i don't see anything could be wrong with it uh, i think it does say you're supposed to you should wait a few days after you spray it uh, but it's three things you get your insecticide for your white flies and aphids and other pests it's a fungicide and then it's a miticide it can it control your spider mites so I, it's a great product and it, it's natural and the other one just for, for pests like your caterpillars and moths and leaf miners this captain jacks if you if you want to read a do a study on something that's really amazing. They didn't even find this stuff. I think it was in the 80s when they found it. And they found it in an old rum factory down in the Caribbean. That's why they call it Captain Jack. <laughs> but it's a live bacteria. 
but it, it doesn't hurt humans or animals. But it'll kill your good bugs with your bad bugs. That's, that's one thing about spraying anything. But if you got some bug, you got a bug problem and you need to spray something, I would try Captain Jack's first and, and do it. And I, I always write on mine so I don't have to read it again. <laughs> and when I throw this bottle away and get another bottle, of course, I think I've only had two bottles now in three years because like I, I don't need it that much. I don't see it. Uh, now sometimes you do have, uh, I do grow tomatoes in buckets. Now I've got about 50 buckets. And so with that soil there, I can get the, the same kind of pest, larvae and stuff. But I, I have been using uh, 8202, hydrogen peroxide. Mm. But I use it 50-50, but I do not, that, that's too strong to touch the plant leaf. But you mix it 50-50, it's, it's dirt cheap to buy, and just pour it, don't let it touch the plant, but just pour it on the, if you're using pine shavings, or sometimes it's just hydrogen there, and then I've got, well, I do have just a soil mixture of perlite and peat moss, and anyway, it will kill and take care of the larvae tremendously of, of like cutworms, and these big hookworms. Of course, once they get big enough that you see them, and then you start pinching them. I ain't pinch them, but I take them off and put them down and stomp them. I, I had uh, some major hookworms uh, last year, uh, but then. Are they hornworms? Hornworms. Horn when, when I'm saying hook. Hookworms are inside you, I think. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Rachel. <laughs> hornworms. Yeah, but they're the ugly-looking things. They're big, like a rhinoceros on the end. <laughs> so, uh, but I found that that H2, I haven't had any problem this year. But that was because last year I thought I just had too many problems. I was talking about the uh, hornworms, but I was calling hookworms. Rachel <laughs> uh, corrected me, they're hornworms. So I might be repeating what I said, but the hydrogen peroxide H2O2, if you mix it 50-50 and just keep it in the soil, don't let it touch the plants, don't spray, it's not a foliage spray. If you want to use it, there's some benefits to using hydrogen peroxide as a foliage spray, but then you only use six to eight tablespoons per gallon. And some people go up to 12, but uh, I'd start with six if you wanted to use it as a foliage spray. But this will control and kill a lot of the eggs and the larvae that's in, in, the, in the soil around the, the plant. Uh, I've, I've got some zucchini that I put in buckets this year that's just doing great. Uh, but uh, I think I was, uh, I, I, I don't remember what else we covered after that, but I think we've covered, I've, I've covered it about all. I think you I, did. I know. Did you talk uh, about that already? Yeah, we did. We did. We, we, well, let's think see. You about Rachel that. says I probably did, this was probably cut out, but it was just showing that, like something like Scotts has got a 55 phosphorus. You put, you add this, and sometimes I do use Nature's Nectar, which is just liquid, one and a half ounces to a gallon. But you want a lot. You want phosphorus in your plants when they're blooming, and even though it's, you know, you've got your, you don't need anything with that three-part system up there. I use that three-part system for probably two years, and that's all I did, and and, and I, I didn't really have any problems. But I noticed, though, if you feed plants, they will grow. And so I noticed when I started feeding the phosphorus, I was putting out a lot more blooms. So if you don't get a squash bloom, you're not going to get a squash. If you don't get a tomato bloom, you're not going to get a tomato. So pour the phosphorus to them when, when they get up and they're going to start the blooming stage. And then... I was trying this this year just because I'm using it for the 32, basically. But the, it's 34, 32, so you got a lot of phosphorus and potassium. And you need to pass the potassium to help the fruit finish growing out. So I think I've covered it just about all. Uh, I see I've, I've got a fish net here. Sometimes if you have a, res, you have a reservoir, and I say if you have a reservoir, because I've done a lot of bills for people. They just have like three to five of these pipe, the 10-foot pipe. So there's, there's no pump, They're, they just go out there, they just mix in the five gallon bucket and they have to pour it in. But that, that does get to be tedious and it's not something that if you're on a busy schedule, you need to do. Hook your pump up to do your work, but you don't, you don't have to. Uh, I was doing 30 pipe by hand for, for a year till I, till I got my nutrients built up to where I just, they're hooked up with a pump and I just take a, a handheld sprayer around and fill them up. But I was gonna say the mosquito dunks, you put them down in a bag like this. And that's what I've got up here in, in the reservoir here at the Agriplex. I just keep them down in there, tie them off. Got a drawstring holding the edge and so we don't have, we're not worrying about mosquitoes here. It's like a tea bag. Yeah, basically. And don't ask me where I got it. Just, just <laughs> anything, I'm just saying, just think outside the box. Anything that's got any kind of mesh to it, 
take some old hosiery or nylon stockings or something and put in there. Uh, well, Rachel, I think that's about it. Uh, so I'm just looking around at what I got here. I can't. You want to tell? Do you else, have any but, favorite websites or resources okay. that you yep, use? Yep. Okay. What? How are we gonna put my email up? Can you just take a uh -huh. quick shot of this if I write it yep. out? Yep. Okay. I'll say it. It's Mike and Donna W at gmail.com. I'm gonna hold that steady because I'm an old man. I get shaky, but I'm gonna hold that steady right there. I can't even hold it steady touching the truck. <laughs> but Rachel's question is a good question because folks, uh, YouTube is, is, is it's just invariable what you can learn on there, but it's also a big waste of time. But I, <laughs> I hate it when you spend 30 minutes and at the end of 30 minutes, he could have taught you whatever you learned in five seconds. And then sometimes you've been doing it two or three or four years like I have and he ain't taught you anything. <laughs> so my point would be is if you'll send me an email, and I don't care if you call me, I won't put my number there because I'm, I'm not gonna answer the phone like I will, an email is no problem. But I can send you, I've already got it made up, it's just me, I don't have to go in there and punch it all in, I just boom, send you the email. But it'll have links to the YouTube people that I use. And it's kind of funny, because I know I was I was in Tony's office one day and I, I noticed a screen, I said, hey, you know, that that's uh, MLP Gardner. He said, yeah, I like his videos. I said, yeah, he's good. You, you don't waste a lot of time. He experiments some. But, uh, you know, Gardening with Leon is, is a site that Leon is a older gentleman like myself out in Oklahoma. And he's just, you just fall in love with him, but he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> and he's making these uh, self-wicking buckets. And I'm trying them this year, my first year to make self-wicking buckets. But he's been doing it for a dozen years. So if he's promoting it, I don't have no doubt it works. But the point is, you can email me and ask me any question. Uh, you know, I can send you, you, you tell me you want to do a, five pipe bill I'll send I can send you what it'll cost you to do it and like I said it is I'm not it it's not cost prohibitive but when you take a guard spot 100 200 square feet here you got to have it and, and, and you got to have your tiller and you got to you know you got you got your nutrients and stuff you got to put on the it's, just, it, it's a lot of work uh in, in the ground and it costs a lot of money there too I'm just saying this way next year you don't have to buy any more net cups well, now, whatever you plant your okra in, you might, because <laughs> I may get that out there. I may not. I may not even try. I may throw it away. But, uh, you, you know, your rock wool's gone, but rock wool's 17 cents a piece. So, yeah, there's a little, little expense. But the, the cost for you raising your own good, organic, healthy food, to me, just walk out your back door. And actually, if you send me an email, if you send me an uh, email in, with your return address, I can send you some pictures of what, what I call bills, different bills. This pipe right here, I've, I've got a, my sister, she's got a nice big flowing deck on her porch. We just put this pipe along the rail. Just hook them to the rail of her porch. To her. And, and she's not, we're not growing anything but lettuce and some peppers there, but she gets, she can just walk right out of her kitchen. It's just right there. Pick some lettuce and go back in and she's done. So uh, I can send you pictures of different bills because, like I said, some of them, if you're going to do this kind of system, you're going to have to have a kind of a lean-to. If you're just going to do lettuce, you can just go straight up. There's, it's just too many variables. So I probably covered basics. Uh, if you aren't doing it, maybe, maybe I hope that uh, you'd be interested in getting started. And people that are doing just regular gardening, this is a lot easier for them because they don't have to learn plants and stuff. They know plants and pests. You're starting from scratch, then you got to learn it all. But it's not hard to learn. It's uh, it's easy for what you get out of it, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, just good, healthy food. And if you don't think inflation is going up, just look at what you're paying for this stuff nowadays. You you'll save a lot of money just growing your own tomatoes and lettuce and tomatoes and peppers. And Rachel, you got any question? I think Anybody else? We it. got a thousand people here. Anybody else got a question? <laughs> we'll send them to you by email. Well, that's just it. Don't feel free. Use my email. Wear it out. I know a lot of your a lot of people go to spam, but I check my spam every day. So other than that, I okay. guess if Marcus gets all these glitches put together, you'll have a good flowing video. Yes, if sir. not, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you.